Welcome, greetings to everyone. My name's Anthony Haynes. I'm creative director at Frontinus Limited, which is a consultancy focused on research communication. And I'm delighted to say I have with me today as our guest, uh, Emma Fromberg. Welcome, Emma. Thank you for having me. Based on our preparation for this interview, it's possible we might have a second guest at some point, which is Emma's cat, Maxine, who's been very keen to get in on the act. So, so we'll see how that goes. Emma, could I ask you, first of all, just to uh, briefly introduce uh, your, your work? Your work is actually very diverse, but what, what, yeah. what kinds of things do you do? So, so we met through uh, my work at the University of Cambridge. Um, I work there for um, the Institute for Sustainability Leadership as the course director in sustainable business. Um, but I do also a variety of other things in relationship to sustainability and circular economy. And that kind right. of all started as a, when I was a design student uh -huh. um, and I was actually very much frustrated by the way how we produce products that was primarily what I was focused on consumer products and I wanted to drop out and then I thought maybe I can make a change from mm. you know whatever we do as designers um, so I started to learn more about how you could design for a more sustainable world and I was inspired by the concept of a circular economy and that's kind of where it all started off for me so um you know, we had this discussion of like, how do you introduce yourself? Like, are you, are you a researcher? Yeah. No, not really, because I, I don't have a PhD, but I also don't, I write and I publish yeah. on conferences and, and journals, but I'm not an official researcher. Um, I engage in the public debates uh, a lot. I'm, I'm a designer, but I currently don't design anything other than um, educational content. Okay, yeah. Um, so it's a bit of a mix of all these different things, but they all evolve around sustainability. Yeah, okay, that's your mission, isn't it? Yeah. A, a more sustainable uh, economy. And um, uh, when we, we first met by email and uh, somewhere along the line, you sent me a link to your personal website. And that's what first drew me to you that um, I thought oh this person does a lot in the field of not just a lot of work but a, a lot in the field of communicating at work which yeah. is my interest so could I ask you just to summarize your approach to communication how do you how do you go about communicating uh, various types of work you do um so like at this stage usually like I'm I'm in the uh, luxury position of the that the opportunities are usually um, they co come to me so it, it can be Great. like through through writing something but also through for example a webinar um, or delivering a keynote at conferences um, I also have some partnerships with um, magazines that. Uh -huh. um, uh, my audience uh, looks at and I have a Instagram account um, so there's just right. and uh, uh, LinkedIn is a really important channel for me professionally mm. um, uh, so like it's a, a really a variety of different channels and I first look at who do I want to reach um, and what is the story and the message and then I look at if the channel is a good fit or if whatever we're doing, if that's the right way to deliver it. And I think that's really important to match those two. Brilliant. Of course, when you, when you said that to a large extent, the work comes to you, you will have made a large proportion of the viewers insanely jealous by saying that, because <laughs> that's always a wonderful, a wonderful situation. It's always nice to be asked, isn't it? But uh, yeah. if, if we focus on your the, the work you do in communications and you in communicating your work and you'll see focus a good deal of intelligence and energy on that um how how's that um work you've committed to communicating how's that benefited you how's that helped you um i think that i went from the position of like working for organization x or doing role z or whatever people started to see me more as Emma Fromberg and I'm a person mm. and, um, you know, I'm a designer, but I talk about circular economy. And also one of my, my hobbies is to go out to the Arctic and to like, I'm involved with a team and we 
also collect data there and were involved in research on climate change. Um, so that's like kind of my adventure side. And um, I got to the position where I can be all of those aspects of myself. And that's really what I love. Um, yeah. I don't just want to represent X and be like really formal, not talk about anything else because yes. I can bring myself to the table and not just um, the researcher or <laughs> the adventurer. Yeah. So it sounds it sounds to me as if you, the communication has benefits in terms of pers personal development. Does it also have benefits in terms of helping you to understand your work better or helping you to decide what to do next? And, you know, does it does it actually feed back into the work you're doing? Yeah, I think so. Like at the end of the day, like the mission, the goal is to make a change, to make mm, to create mm. a more sustainable world and Currently, I think, you know, en engaging in the debates and being relevant is a really important part of, of making like creating that change. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm definitely being guided by what is on the agenda and where where the energy is. Um, I also really believe in if if the public debates, you know, it, it could be in a certain industry, it could be mm. you know, in a, as a wider public debate. But if it's super flaky, if it kind of if it's not focused, that's not helpful. Like it's helpful if people like try to read each other's work and try to engage yeah. with each other's work and have a contemporary conversation. So it's very important to listen to what topics are mm -hmm. relevant and important right now. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Yes. There, there, there will be lots of people listening to you and thinking, uh, I really like this, you know, I like this approach. I want some of this myself. So I'm keen to find out what sort of advice or guidance you could give to, to other people in your sort of field. I think particularly because really it's, it's a sort of still an emerging field. And I think some of the comms work you do is modern and not necessarily in the textbooks. I'm not sure I can go to the university library and pick up a textbook and find out how to do the things you do. So yeah. I'd, I'd like to ask you in a moment about the way you use photographs, but perhaps before we do that, could I just ask you about the communications stuff generally? I mean, what, what if someone comes to you with a, wanting advice or guidance on how to effectively communicate their work, what kinds of things would you want to suggest? I think the very most important thing now, if you have an online presence, is to stay authentic. Um, I think people always mm. find out when you're not authentic or when you want to pretend something uh, that you're not. Uh, so, like, you know, showing your human element and, and sticking really closely to yourself. Um, mm. For example, on, like, I use a channel for what it's best for so with LinkedIn I you know it's 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 a bit more formal I usually share my writing that is very specifically applicable for a sustainable business type of audience that's my bigger following right. and then on Instagram I actually very much work together with um uh like also Dutch magazines on okay. uh, for, specifically for women my my following is usually like younger women and it's more around female empowerment i do slot a lot of sustainability issues in but it's also about like my training and that kind of stuff so being aware of your audience and yeah. and just being like really honest and and authentic but but aware of like what people want to hear um you know you don't you don't have to make trade-offs in that sense um yes Yes. You can't be very thoughtful in how you use those platforms um, and, and what part of yourself you want to show there. Um, yeah. I, I think that's fascinating. I, I'm amazed in my own communications work how often I end up saying to people, you just need to think about the audience more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and, and also, like, engage with them. Like, you know, you get reactions on posts, uh, which yes. do well. Um, what things do people ask? But also, I find, especially with LinkedIn, by the way, um, that finishing a post with a question really yeah. invites people to engage. And that engagement is so much information on what people are interested in and, um, you know, why they are following you. Yeah. Yes. In fact, I've just um, 
completed a, a professional course and in the coursework we each had to write posts and the rule was that every post had to finish with a question and it was just <laughs> just amazingly good at sparking a conversation so yeah, yeah. And thank you. So, so let me just go on. I said earlier, it'd be useful to hear about your photography because you very kindly, uh, when I contacted you and I said, I'm interested in what you're doing, you kindly sent me um, a link to some photographs you have online, which is not your kind of common or garden family album. It was you <laughs> surrounded by lots of snow and ice in most cases. So uh, what's your thinking about photography and how you go about using that? So, yeah, that's, Usually, so my media pack is mostly um, uh, for, for people have questions, especially around um, the work and adventuring that I do. Mm. Um, that's because they they often don't they you know it's like the most alien place on earth, the Arctic, and yes. <laughs> it it looks so different than any other place you've ever been. Um, it's honestly like being on a different planet, right? And telling that story just using your words doesn't do it justice mm. um so that's really when i bring in photography and also like i find that especially that audience that i reach through adventuring and then you have like female empowerment but still like showing that side of me that's really passionate about sustainability um that that audience reacts better to imagery and that's very much connected to my Instagram work so yeah. therefore having strong imagery is really important um, also because you know the whole platform operates around pictures um, so I have some collaborations yeah. going on um, okay uh, also with an adventure photographer who's a good friend of mine um, so usually like I go to him if I need like mm. a, a new round of pictures and also if any magazine wants to uh, publish like a multi-page or um, a newspaper. I always supply my pictures myself and right. then we sell the rights to the picture. So yes. I have a deal with like my friend who's a photographer. So I'm in charge of um, how those pictures are being taken and that I'm yeah. comfortable with that. Like I'm not a model and I don't yeah. want like a newspaper to kind of get like a budget photographer. And yes. um, because yes. it, it just, um, it, it can be quite damaging to, um, to go cheap in those, in those mm. areas. And it's important to find the people around you that you trust mm. um, uh, mm. to, to do you justice as a person as well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, but that just emerged. That was through personal connections um, uh, uh, that that kind of emerged, and 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 again, it was specifically it worked specifically well for that audience. Yeah, well, I, I in my own communications work, I frequently encourage people to use still photography, and if they have a budget for it, a professional um, photographer, and um, quite often the you know. Um, the actual cost of a professional photographer is not astronomic. Um, so it seems to be good value for money. Especially That's... when you make a deal where you say, okay, yeah. we're going to make this collection. Um, we have, you know, let's say five um, uh, magazines and newspapers that want to publish in the next uh, year or in next months. Um, and I will make sure that at least half of them uh, purchase uh, pictures. Like, and then if, if the photographer sees a commission of that, like then you can basically make a deal based on how well you perform that year. Um, so yeah, that usually works quite well. Um, yeah, you create a win-win situation with a photographer, don't you? So, yeah, but it's important yeah. to always let the publisher know that in advance um, because they yeah. need to like allocate budget to that. Usually I don't charge them for my story unless it's like a really extensive interview mm. um but if they if they want to publish pictures sometimes they're very used to having uh like pictures for free um yes. so it's important to let them yes. know up front that they're not for free and that that's going yes. to require some budget and just to manage expectations because all those contacts within newspapers those are really valuable and those are definitely individuals that you want to deal with in a professional way yeah, um absolutely and that also have you know they want to do well in their job and part of that is also to manage their own budgets 
Yes, indeed. Yes. And I, I'm sure you do this. It's important to let people know very early on, if you're going to use your photographs, that uh, the right situation is clear and that you have a copyright permission because they often worry about about that don't they yeah but, um, so there'll be people listening and watching and thinking well i'd like to find out more about your work what's how, what's the best way then finding out more about emma fromberg well it it depends on um what part of my work so yeah. um if it's around expeditioning it's instagram and then i'm at that polar girl and um right. uh, if it's more around my thinking on circular economy i have that mostly centralized on linkedin um, and I'm my own website, emmafromberg.com. Um, right. And also like the courses that I'm the course director of are first, um, hosted um, at, on the CISL website. So Cambridge Institute for Sustainability Leadership. Um, so if you want to know more about that, you can go to the university website. Brilliant. Now I'm disappointed that Maxine has decided not to make an appearance, but maybe I need to do a deal with your cat's agent. Maybe that's what I, where I've gone wrong. But but I think we I think we've managed very well without, without the yeah. cat. So may I say thank you very much. I, I, I really enjoyed hearing uh, more about your work. I think the insights you've given us are the many and varied, and um, and extremely rich. So I'm grateful to you for that. Thank you, Emma. Thank you for having me.